Hey guys, so I got Paul here from Secor. He come down here to uh, pay me a visit and he's actually gonna help educate me a little bit about the Secor machine, proper usage, and maybe maybe even some tips on how to properly clean out the machine sumps. Yep. Thanks a lot, Adam. Yep. Uh, so we're here. Adam has done some stuff to get this unit up and going. Normally this comes without the valve on the discharge and that, so that's something you would have to put on, which Adam has done so far. What we're going to do is we're going to first run the unit just to check to make sure everything's operating correctly. So we're going to put the connection hose on suction, and we have wing nuts loose here right now. So we're on suction, we'll hit the on button. The vacuum will start pulling this lid down. The reason we do it this way is it pulls the lid down evenly. If you tighten one wing nut real tight and the other one's not as tight, you could have a leak there. So once we have the thing sealed up, we have the clean outdoor sealed up on the back side here. We've ran it on vacuum. We were able to get up to the 13 inches of mercury that this unit can do. We'll now disconnect this from the suction and put it on the discharge. Once we've done that, we'll start the unit up again. We're creating a pressure in the tank. You can put your hand around here to make sure you're sealed here. That's the relief valve for pressure that you're hearing. We check the clean out door to make sure that's sealed. The unit will stabilize back to zero. We'll go and put this back on suction. One thing with the unit is it's always best to keep it on suction until you're ready to discharge. That reduces the chance for an accidental discharge, having a valve open that you don't know. So the unit is now up and ready to go. We have a filter bag in place and we can get to cleaning sumps. All right. Thanks. I guess we'll hook her up and start cleaning the sump out then, huh? Yep. Yeah, that was, uh, that was helpful there because I did not Whenever I first installed the uh, the filter there, I did not do your procedure of sucking it down and then tightening it up. Yeah. So okay, so that's why you're here. You're here to teach me the proper ways to use the machine. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Okay, so we have a sump cleaner here full of dirty coolant that we're going to take out for recycling. So we're going to discharge the fluid out of here into this drum. So we'll first get our hose off. Here you go. I'll take that one for you. So we hook that into the discharge port of the sump cleaner. We go and connect from the suction level to the discharge. And now we'll start the unit. And what you'll notice is it's showing a pressure on the gauge. So we know we're going to be discharging now. I'll open this valve slowly. This unit will discharge at 110 gallons per minute with a two inch hose. We have an inch and a half. We're gonna be doing about 60 here. Now you wanna have a hand on this valve. As you can see, the hose is jumping around. And that, when we're getting close to the end of the fluid in the tank. And so it'll squirt and that out. Now that we've done that, the hose is all filled with fluid yet from discharging. If you keep running it, it starts shooting a lot of air out. So what we'll do is we'll clear the hose by changing this back over to vacuum. We'll fire this up. And if you look at the gauge, you'll see now we're on vacuum. So now I can open this valve. It's now cleared the hose. The hose is empty. We can shut this off. 
that's helpful. I did not do that either <laughs> whenever I <laughs> well, used it the other day. little tricks, little tricks out there. Yep, so that's some of the dirty coolant that I actually sucked out of one of the machines. We're just gonna knock these chips out of the discharge here before we open up the sump. So we're gonna use this as, uh, as our test subject today, the sump for the Flex CNC. We can access that pretty easily by just lifting up this uh, chip basket right here. I think we can just pick it up and just set it right over here. Okay. There you go. Well, it doesn't look too oh, bad. Yeah, Adam, you've done a pretty good job there. Not a lot of tramp oil in there. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of oil in that one. This may be a bad uh, test subject right here, yeah. but. Well. I think it's coming all sizes and in all conditions. So. <laughs> and it's the original coolant. I mean, I filled this up last year, so it's it's been in there a little while. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. One of the first things we'll do, or I like to do, is we get an opening into the sump, and I like to just feel around a little bit to see if there's big pockets of sludge in the tank. And this is relatively relatively clean in the bottom. Uh, I've seen sumps where when we've opened this up, you'll see the chips still on top. They, ha they have it that full of sludge oh, wow. in that. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons with the sump cleaner, this happens so fast that you can get in and clean it more often and hopefully you don't have a sump that more, has more solids in than coolant. So we're going to set the unit up to clean out this sump. So we unhook this. This is a safety cap that if you're on discharge, it can only come off that far. Okay. To release it the rest of the way, you give it a turn and then it comes off. Yeah. We hook the suction hose up to this. The coolant will come in here and get filtered out in the filter basket. We check to make sure we're on the suction mode here. And now the unit is ready to clean a sump. Okay, we're gonna suck some of the fluid out of the sump right now. Uh, Adam's going to be uh, running the machine. Yep. All right, so you ready to do this? Yes. So we'll, everything's hooked up right. We're going to go ahead and turn it on and start sucking. Yep. And it's okay to just to keep it buried in the coolant, right? Yeah, you can keep it buried in the coolant. These units, some cleaners like to be in fluid more than air. I can see it trying to... Okay, we've sucked up a few gallons now. And we're going to use this coolant to flush the machine down, so we can pull it out now. And we'll shut the unit down. And then we'll move to discharging into the machine to wash down any chips that are hung up in the machine. Yeah, that's another one of the great features that I'm excited about with this on, especially with the Flex CNC, because I don't have any other kind of wash down hose for the for coolant on that. Okay. Okay, we're going to discharge some coolant in. We're looking to wash down some of the chips that are on the bed here that we'll show you here in a second. We've switched the unit over to discharge like we showed earlier. So we'll hit the on button. So you can see the chips that we have down in there. Open this up. Oh yeah. And you can see how we blew the chips that were in the tube and that out. All right, since we actually washed some of the chips down in here, we're gonna go ahead and do that again and uh, suck the chips up into the sump shark. I'll fire this up, we're on suction. Suction connected here. It's gonna go up into here. And you can see the chips over there. So 
So Adam's going to the bottom of the sump where is some where the sludge will normally be. And we go and attack the bottom right off the bat. This is when our suction is the highest, when the nozzle is in the fluid. We're yeah. running probably about 13 inches of mercury right now. Straight nozzle is probably the best for gulping the coolant or taking the the, sol the fluid levels down. There's some more chips there. Under those pumps for the uh, coolant, a lot of times that's where the finest solids are located at. Yeah, they got a screen on it there. Okay. I figured where um, where that basket sits, since it's just expanded metal, any fine chips are probably Falling sitting right, in, sitting right in this area here, right? Yeah, every sump can be a little bit different. I'm gonna hand Adam another tool. get to the lower level, the flared tool works pretty good for that final suck out. There's some more chips right here. You can see them a little better now. There's a little bit of sludge up there on that other side there. You can see how he's grabbing the holes and just guiding the tools to the back. Gives you more reach. I went ahead and took the other uh, cover off just to kind of make it a little easier on us to get in here. A little bit of sludge on this side, not a lot. You can see it down in there though. So due to the sump being so open, we're going to switch from the flared nozzle to a floor squeegee. Now normally this gets used for picking up puddles and that, but again, I can reach into all of this. This is going to do a fine job on sucking the residue that we have left. So fire us up. So this guy right here is also extremely helpful if you have a coolant spill on the floor. That is correct. That, and, but nobody ever has that happen. No, not at all. But you could also, technically you could use it for oil, I suppose, if you, if you spill yeah. some oil on the floor as well. Doing a fine job at cleaning out that sump, Paul. Oh, thank you. <laughs>
Well, it makes it easy. So when you're cleaning the sump, the unit will be running and all of a sudden you'll be showing on here full vacuum. But at the end of the hose you'll have no suction. What that means is that the filter is probably now full of solids and is completely filled or the hose has a blockage in it. But we're running full vacuum and that means something has stopped from it going into the tank. If you're running and cleaning the sump and you have no suction at the end of the hose, but you look at your gauge and you cup the end of the hose, but it's still showing zero, that means now the fluid has completely filled the tank. There's a flow control in under here that shuts the vacuum off to keep it from overflowing. And that's why you see a zero here and still having no suction at your end of your hose. So we're gonna open this up and see what we filtered out when we were cleaning the sump. So we open these wing nuts. And the reason we use wing nuts is we get a tight seal every time we put the cover on. So I can lift this up and that's what we pulled out of this sump. There's, there's all your chips and Fine chips, well, it is the burlap, so. Yeah, the unit comes with three different filters. This is a coarse, and normally when you get the sump cleaner, it's probably good to start with this, especially if it's a sump that you haven't cleaned in months. There's a poly filter, our most durable filter, and with this, uh, we have customers that will run this over a year before they have to replace it. All these are replaceable. Then we also have a fine filter, sort of a cotton material. And the burlap and the cotton seem to work better if you have a lot of tramp oil or a tramp oil issue. The green poly attracts oil and might have more of an issue with the filter blinding. If I wanted to uh, just filter the coolant, say try to get more of the fine particles out, mm -hmm. is this what I would use then? Is this that, guy right here? The fine would be the one to use. Another thing you can do is if you have a lot of sludge in there, use the burlap, pump it into, back into the sump or into a drum, change out filters to a finer filter and then run it through again. Okay, all right. We also have a discharge filter that's an option that goes on here. And with that, we have a 10 or a 20 micron filter. I usually suggest customers to first try these units and then if they need more filtration, then come back to us. It's just something that couples onto the discharge. We're on suction, we're pulling this down. Uh, we looked at the filter. We're gonna leave it in. We're not gonna empty it. You don't need to empty the filter every time you're cleaning a sump. Uh, you can wait until the unit is uh, completely filled before you go to dump it. Okay. So we've switched this over to discharge, and now we're gonna discharge the fluid out of the sump cleaner back into the sump. So I'll grab the end of the hose, and we'll start this up. The gauge lets me know that I'm on the pressure side of things. There's the pressure in the tank now. Come over here, I'll open this valve real slow for starters. And this will discharge the fluid And again, I'll clear the hose now. And that's just switching it over to suction, turning it on. I watch the gauge, I'm on the vacuum side of things now. So you've seen the different tools. There's the flared nozzle, there's a straight nozzle. We also have a flexible nozzle. All these just slip into here. And for the inch and a half hose, these are all based off an inch and a quarter pipe. So if you have a sump, let's say the sump ran the full length of this machine, you could take a long pipe, plug it on the end of this and run it all the way down through the end of the machine. A lot of times with screw machines and that, you'll see some of that. Um, so you can even make your own tools with this. 
If you're using the two inch hose, then the tools are all based off a two inch pipe. That's easy enough. You can run down to the, to the hardware store and get you a piece of pipe and make your own tools for it. Very true, very true. So you can see we got some residue, a little bit of oil in that floating on the top of the sump. And maybe you don't want to get in and clean this sump right away. So there's an option with this. Turn it in on vacuum. And I'm just going to turn my tool upside down and just go in here. It's like you're skimming it. And skimming the top off. Yeah. I think normally what we see is a big, thick, heavy layer of tramp oil on there, and this is kind of what you're yeah, what we're talking about, getting that thick, that thick oil off the top of it. So job is pretty well done, but what we did decide to do, or I did, we went ahead and just cleaned the sump completely. We sucked everything out, and I'm going to be wiping this out, and we're going to put brand new fresh coolant in the machine sump here. So we're going to discharge the fluid out of the tank here, and then we'll do a clean out of the sump cleaner. You don't need to do that every time, but if you're changing types of coolant, it's a good time to do it. If you've cleaned a real dirty machine and you're concerned about bacteria in that, then it's a good time to clean out the machine also. So put that in there. We're set up on discharge. As always, check the gauge. We're on the pressure side of things. Start out slow. And as you can see how fast we're filling this tank. I got another drum I'm gonna bring and we'll fill that one up too. Okay, you can see it's starting to jump. And that's why you want to always have a hand on the discharge valve when you're discharging. So I'm going to clear the hose. Again, as always, I'm watching. I'm on the vacuum side, so I know it's safe to do this. You don't need to do this every time. We're going to clean out the sump cleaner and you should do that whenever you're changing coolants or if you've cleaned a real dirty sump and you got bacteria issues in that, then it's a good, good practice to clean this out before you move on so you don't cross contaminate. So this particular unit has fork pockets on and what we've done is we've lifted the sump cleaner up that we're not on the floor trying to clean um, clean the unit out. What I normally do is I'll start on one side and open a wing nut. And you can see the coolant. There's probably an inch or two in the bottom of the sump. We do that actually as another slight filtration of fines. That residue stays in the bottom uh, and those fines will stay in the bottom. And with this opening one side, if your reservoir was too small or something, you can shut it off real quick by just tightening this back up. That's really helpful. This is, this is why I'm glad you're here showing me the proper usage of the machine. These units also have a plug on them that you could put a valve on it and drain it that way. So the fluid is sort of stopped so we can start opening the second wing nut. And here you can see what kind of gaskets we have on these units. That's a half inch oh, yeah. thick. So that's a look up in the machine there. And actually, Adam, if you can point it up, you might be able to catch the uh, float control that's inside the unit. Uh, it's a little dark. Okay. I need to get a light to be able to see it. 
So we also have some optional tools these days. Uh, we have this rake system for if you have a bunch of nested chips, you can go and rake them out of the machine. Or sometimes uh, your vessel that your chips are flowing into gets full and you want to push them back and forth a little bit, you can use that. We also have this tool. Again, this can be used in the sump to pull solids out. It has a rounded area for cleaning out a sump cleaner. So this just slides in. It's got a couple snaps here. And we have added lengths of this, but this is long enough for the sump right now, but you would get the whole full length if you order this. So this goes in here. We can go up to the front. And there's not much residue in this one. I'd imagine a lot of cases this is full of sludge. Yeah, full of sludge. So I take it from here, we can just simply use the water hose then and kind of rinse what's left. That is correct. And we can rinse it in through the pot or the inlet up front. Okay. And push it all towards the back. All right. I'm just gonna get this in here. Yep. Rinsing it right on out of there. How are we looking? Yeah, it's looking good. I might just give one shot off the end if you're okay with that. Uh, so staying clear. Yep. That's just the water from the hose coming out right there. Any of the oil sludge is dripping off into the bucket there. Okay. So I was helping out. I just took some rags here at the end and just reached up in there as far as I could and just wiped out the bottom of it there. And we've got a nice clean tank now. So we're going to put the door back in. What's critical on the door is getting it centered. So I'll get it in this far and stick the two wing nuts in. Then I'll just take my fingers and make sure I'm centered in there. Oh yeah, side to side. Side to side. And then we just screw this. And when we want, uh, like we do with the top, take them in kind of evenly. Okay. And if you want, you could even do the vacuum trick that we're doing in front. But normally, if you just look at your distance on both sides and bring them in evenly, yeah. that should do the trick. Okay. All right, so... <clears throat> The sump cleaner has a metal basket in here to support the filter. And that just drops in. It does have two lifting eyes here that you can rig a chain for lifting it out. Oh, right. I imagine that, that, that will get heavy if you got it filled up. Right. But most of the time, you can just use the filter bag and lift that out. And the one cubic foot is generally able for one person to just pull it out and throw it. Okay. Now, if this size filter is too small for the amount of sludge that you have. We also have a 2.3 cubic foot filter that we call the F23. And that slides right in here also. Okay. We have the burlap bag. That just drops in. We put the sides out over the top. That way the fluid has to go through the filter. There's no bypass on it. And then we have the cover. And again, we use wing nuts on this. And the reason we do that is, you know, as you use the unit, this has a half inch thick gasket and the gasket takes kind of a seat as time goes on. This way, every time you screw it down, you get a secure seat in that gasket. And like I said, the one trick is to run this under vacuum. But if you forget that just the key is, is pull them all down about the same amount of tension. There we have it. All right. It's cleaned. We got a fresh filter ready for the next job. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Secor? Well, Secor was started back in 1955 uh, by an engineer, Bob Troller. 
Um, he had worked for a company called Carnes as part of their line at, at that time, and Carnes wanted to get out of that. They were made more air handling stuff. And so he took over the line and started building them in a basement, uh, and it grew from there. Uh, the company from that time to this day has been kind of engineer driven. Uh, we're also very customer oriented, uh, trying to help a problem out there of dirty sumps and how to clean them. And uh, that's how the company became about, was making a product to help clean out machine sumps and yes, coolants? Yes, that is our main line. We also make a line of dumping containers, uh, really designed mainly for the machine tool industry. They get used in a lot of other areas also. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, as for myself, I started in 1979 sweeping floors at Seacor. Year I was born. Hey, there you go. <laughs> a bomb 79. Oh my God. <laughs> um, sweeping the floors. Sweeping huh? the floors. That's uh, how we all start out, I think. I was going to school at the time, and uh, and uh, I knew the production manager. I got to know the production manager, and uh, they got me in the door doing that. Um, it was good because. Around that time, there was a pretty big recession, and when I got out of school, I had a place to go to. Oh, yeah. But through the years, uh, I ran fabricating equipment there. I welded. Uh, that's what my degree was in. I went back to school for drafting, uh, started doing some sales. I've done production managing there. Uh, they've really, it's been a good ride for me there. So you've done a little bit of everything for Secor then? It, pretty much, pretty That's much. That's pretty cool. Starting off sweeping the floor to fabricating and building to helping design and and uh, and help even with the sales and everything, right? Very rewarding. I, and, you know, with that, it's nice. I get to talk to the customer, mm -hmm. get to find out where their concerns, where their pain areas are, yeah. and then we try to address that and make life easier for them. Very cool. Well, you've certainly been with them a very long time, and it's, uh, you know, you just, you don't hear about that too much in today's day is people being with a company for so many decades like mm -hmm. that. So yeah. that no, is awesome. They've been very good to me. Very awesome. Good. Why should I use a sump cleaner, and how is this different than some of the other typical methods that you usually see people use when cleaning out a sump? You now, through my years with Seco, I've seen quite a variety of stuff. Uh, a lot of times we sort of joke and say, so many people use a pail and shovel to clean out a sump. Yeah, uh, I've been there myself many yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> They'll use maybe the pumps on the machine to pull the fluid off. Uh, yeah. And there's also, well, the wet dry vacs is another thing that a lot of people will use. Sump cleaner creates a much deeper vacuum than, than a wet dry vac. Uh, even most uh, of the bung mounted vacuums I mean, we'll pull uh, 26 inches of mercury in our air-operated units. That's enough to crush a 55-gallon drum. Wow. But you need that kind of power to pull up the sludges and the coolants. Right. Another thing that a sump cleaner does is fluid never comes in contact with the pumps on this. Yeah. We're moving air. Mm -hmm. So the pumps aren't getting that abrasive chips and, and things going through the pump themselves. Um, Really, the best way to look at it is the over-the-road vac trucks that you see. Mm -hmm. We're using the same technologies in that on this. Okay, yeah. Um, some cleaner also allows you to filter out some of the sludges. Um, you picture a sump, and you got tramp oil on top. You got grime underneath, and the fluids in the center. Yep. And the pumps on the sumps themselves are just taking that cleaner coolant and recycling it. Yeah. But you got that buildup on both ends. Sump cleaner will pull that all out, get the solids out of there. Um, allows you to pull off the tramp oil. The rates that we pump at, we don't address pump the oil, but you can vacuum the oil off the top. You can use it to transport to a secondary system to yeah. take that off. Yeah. Um, we also uh, have the discharge capability, so we can suck it out, filter it, discharge it back into a machine tool sump. Yeah, exactly. It's, <clears throat> that's one of the benefits that I learned about when I started using it is being able to uh, you know, suck up chips, the coolant, filter it, and then pump it back in the machine or actually use it to help kind of hose off the, the chip pan down in there, kind of rinse some of those chips down into the bottom you know, where the auger's at. Very true. Yeah, it's, very been, true. It's, been, it's been very helpful so far. Yep. So where do some of the savings come from when you're using a sump cleaner? Well, one of the big things is the speed that this unit can pull out the coolant and that. 
reduces the machine tool downtime. We hear from customers that they're down for half a day, full day, cleaning a machine tool sump. Right. With this, within 45 minutes, they're up and running and making parts again. Yeah. That's a big thing. That's where you make your money. Secondly, we can extend coolant life by getting the sludges, the bacteria, pulled out of a sump periodically. Mm -hmm. You can run that coolant a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, there's also some of the health issues for the operators and having operators missing time for contact dermatitis and things on that order. Uh, we are back from our customers payback on this at less than a year. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can certainly see the benefits myself just with the, the amount of time that it takes to clean out a sump versus not having a sump cleaner. What should someone be looking for when they're wanting to purchase a sump cleaner? Well, there's a number of units out there that say that they can clean machine tool sumps. Uh, one of the biggest things is you need a deep vacuum to clean out a machine tool sump. With the sludges and, and the heaviness of that material yep. uh, and the stickiness that you can clear a hose and keep moving, we feel that you need to get to at least 13 inches of mercury. Okay. Um, a lot of wet dry vacs in that or maybe it's 7 inches of mercury. Yep. That's probably a fairly good unit. Secondly, um, look for a unit that the fluid does not come in contact with the pump. Uh, yeah. A good sump cleaner should be moving air. Yeah. That extends the life of the pumps and that, and it really works more like on the over-the-road back trucks that you see. Yeah. Um, the uh, filtering, what kind of filtering systems do they have? Are they set up for this kind of sludge? Mm -hmm. um, you'll have a lot of people talking about wanting to get real fine filtration. And they're looking at it from the, what's going through your machine pumps. But what's going on is in the bottom, there's a heavier sludge yeah. that is developing that a 10 micron filter will not work at all with. Okay. So you have to find that balance there. Um, hopefully they have more than one type of filter fabric that you can find what works best for your system. Another thing is the transport, making sure that uh, you have a fairly big diameter wheel. Um, and we had some big casters on RC uh, core here. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I noticed it instantly how easy it is to just move this around by hand. Well, this is a 90 gallon unit. When it's filled with fluid, it's got over a thousand pounds in it. That's heavy. Yeah. yeah. But we got them set up that you can push them around by hand. And a lot of that was a lot of work on getting a wheel in that that would work well with the units. Yeah. Um, and your all of your years' experience there, did you help with that too? <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Developing the I did a the lot. Right of size I did a lot of pull tests on this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've aimed to try and keep it under 100 pounds of pressure in one direction to get them to roll. Okay. And that would be our heaviest unit, a 200 gallon that we still say is pushable by hand. Yeah. We okay. do make them as big as 600 gallons, but um, if you get to that level, you yeah. need help. Yeah, <laughs> might be using a tow motor for that. <laughs> yeah. And the other benefit that I remember uh, you know, learning about right off was the fork pockets on there, which we showed earlier in the video, mm -hmm. being able to easily pick this up for either cleaning it or maybe you want to transport it and set yeah. it in a truck or a trailer. Yep, the fork pockets are an option now. Uh, actually, we also have a tow bar for it. That's an option. Oh, okay. And we can set that up whatever way a customer wants. Oh, yeah. So if you do want to pull it behind your tow motor, you can pull it to the machine. And, yep. Yeah, that's nice. And then our units all have clean outdoors, and that's another thing that you want to look for a sump cleaner that has a way to get it cleaned out fairly easily. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of filtering in there, but there's some residue that does get past our filters, and periodically you've got to just go in and scrape that out. And yeah, totally understood. Yeah, that is a nice feature having that clean outdoors so you can reach in there and just kind of wash it out and wipe it out yeah. and you're done. And looking at those clean outdoors, uh, it's good to see if they're mounted flush to the bottom. I've seen some clean outdoors where they move them up. Well, then you got to try and mm -hmm. pull that sludge up past that. It's yeah. Well, you guys did a good job on that one. It's, it makes clean out really nice and got nothing but good things to say about my sump shark, man. It is, it's an excellent machine. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yep. We take pride in it. That's for sure. Yep. I love it. Made in America too. Yeah. Would you say that it is safe to use the sump shark to suck oil? Like yes. straight oil? If yeah, straight cutting oil. Um, we get used in the screw machine industry quite often. Okay, yeah. Um, 
I mean, flammables, um, and if you have something that's a little more active than that, contact us and we'll tell you yeah. if it's something we can do or if it's something we can't do. And quite often we'll maybe even point you in a direction of something that we know in the industry that could help. Yeah. One of the reasons why I brought that question up is because of a personal experience of mine. I used to work in a hydraulic shop mm -hmm. and there was one incident at one time where we had a telescopic cylinder blow apart while we were testing it. <laughs> and you're talking about two 55 gallon drums full of oil that went across the entire shop floor. Oh boy. It was a nightmare. That's been a skating rink. <laughs> and they were calling everybody that they knew, everybody that we knew it was being called, do you have a shop vac? Can you come and help us? So there was a bunch of us over there, you know, in the shop with our shop vacs, sucking that oil up off the floor. And that's why I asked that is uh, this, in the event of an emergency like that, where you do have an oil spill or a coolant spill, you can easily take the sump chart and go over there and suck all that up. Yeah. Uh, much better than a regular old shop vac. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got the capacity for one thing. <laughs> yeah. So but. it's sort of like a backup feature that I'm that I'm looking at if, in the event of. But if someone had that, say in a hydraulic shop, because maybe they're using some other equipment, uh, a honing machine or anything like that, that if they did have an emergency like that, you can use it to suck all that oil up off the floor. Well, I'm talking to people, anybody who's filled machine tool sumps, sooner or later, uh, their employee or whatever got talking about a football game and the next thing they got a lot of cleanup to do. Yeah, <laughs> well, I wasn't talking about a football game, but I did have a big coolant spill over here <laughs> with the saw because I let it overflow. <laughs> and uh, and that's where it helped out. You know, I got uh -huh. the sump shark and just sucked it all up. So it is, it is handy for those kinds of things too, not just your coolant filtration. So mm -hmm. it's a really handy helper machine to have around the shop. Um, well, Paul, I really appreciate you coming by. Hey. And, um, you know, show me the proper way to use the sump shark. It was very, very helpful. And I hope that it's very helpful for everybody that's viewing the video, maybe giving them a little bit of insight knowledge that maybe they didn't realize before on uh, why they might want to consider a machine like this, you know, a sump cleaner. Well, thanks for the time and getting the word out on what this equipment can do. Yeah, not a problem. Enjoyed you coming by and visiting and everything that you showed me and I hope you guys enjoyed the video too and I hope to see you again very soon.